welcome back to the YTG podcast. If welcome. you are new here, my name is Nico. I'm an automotive photographer and now amateur racing driver. I'm Sean and I am the owner of this lovely shed in Keysborough. YTG Young Timers Garage. Here Welcome. on the the weekly ish YTG, we're yes. going to give you the sort of inside scoop inside the automotive industry in Australia, as well as some fantastic stories, mm-hmm. motorsport, anything car, car related. related. So and a bit of electric car hate. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, join us on another episode, and we hope you enjoy. Welcome, Welcome back, back, episode ten, season two. YTG podcast. We're here. We're loving it. We're excited. We're Next awake week, now. Ten minutes later. Yep, that's exactly As right. You know we roll. That is exactly right. So last episode, we talked too long. Too many tangents, Sean. <sighs> Fuck what you do, mate. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. So we are going to blast through a whole bunch of latest yes. news. So we've been up to a lot lately. One of the reasons we haven't filmed in so long is because we've had so much Pretty other hectic. stuff going on every weekend, every week. I was just in Sydney. It's been crazy. Yes. So let's kick off with all the things that we've been doing lately. You mm-hmm. went to Phillip Island. You went to Adelaide. You had like three weekends back to back. Which I don't normally do. And I was meant to be at the Sydney concourse in, at the start of all of that. So it was Sydney concourse, then the following... The, so one weekend, Sydney concourse kicked everything off. Then after that was the Phillip Island Historics, which is always a fantastic event. Then after that, the following weekend was Adelaide Motor, Motorsport Festival of Speed, that was out of control. Never been to that. That was a fantastic event. And then after that, we had Formula oh, One. So it was four weekends so te- in a row. So technically four weekends in a row, which anyone knows I don't do that. But, yeah, it was one of those things that, yeah, I'm glad I went. More so, which you know, I'll, I'll say at the end of the end of the episode. But, yeah, it was, it was good to go. It was great to run into so many people. But it was hectic. And, and yeah, for the few people that came up and said hello, yeah, thank you. That I think we maybe have 40 people now that watch us. <laughs> um, the Formula One was nuts. The amount of people that coming up to It was crazy. crazy. Yeah, it was a lot of people. So thank you all that watch. Like I said, we maybe, maybe, maybe we got to 50 now. I don't know. But <laughs> there was a lot of people that came up and had seen what we do. And, and yeah, it was very humbling to, to, to get the really positive feedback. And, yeah, the people like what we do and like our topics and how we keep it real and... And yeah, no, it was really, really, really positive. So great couple of weekends. It really, really did take a lot of us out, uh, take a lot of it, a lot of out, out of us. Um, yeah, it was just yeah. Sometimes you just, just didn't want to talk anymore. It was just running into so many people. Great, great events. Great, great coverage. Great range of cars. Great diversity of race cars. Great diversity of of motorbikes and just. Yeah, well, yeah, Adelaide just, Festival of Speed is kind of like Australia Goodwood, right? That's basically what they were calling it. Really yeah. was, and and it was good to catch up with you know, yeah, good 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 to catch up with the crew, a uh, lot of lot of dear old friends. Um, yeah, it was it was it was good. It was. And good. YTG actually sponsored a few of the races at yeah, the Island. Yeah, right? um, that was that was a big thing. Again, um, it was uh, yeah. It, it, and the reason for my muddling, and I'm a bit confused, only because uh, some that know, some that don't know, um, one of my closest friends uh, sadly uh, passed, uh, well, I suppose, what day is it today? When, Tuesday, Wednesday? Tuesday, today. Tuesday, um, Sunday evening. Ben Henson, mate, we're going to miss you, mate. We love you, and we are heartbroken, mate. And just, yeah, fuck, shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened. Gone too soon. Yeah, really was a, a, a good person, and... And uh, yeah, he, it was good to catch up with him for those couple of weekends that they were there. The old crew, they had some epic cars as always, you know, XF1s and X Le Mans cars and 962s and 5.6s and X Arrows and Benettons and just, just, just amazing stuff that he was always able to put together from his clients. And, you know, he had, you know, he had all XF, Nigel Mansell, XF1, yes, Williams yeah. crew there and just all the pit boys and, yeah, it was just it was fantastic. So it, it, it was great, great to great to catch up and see him yeah, enjoying what he was good at. And yeah, it was it was a long, long three, four weeks, and even harder as, as I said as 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 sadly as we watched our friend yeah just get yeah get 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 worse, and yeah that 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 
yeah, that was hard, but that but it was good to it was good to spend that spend that time with him. So yeah, yeah, it was yeah, bit bit bu busy March, busy March. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the other things that we got up to in March is I had my first race weekend, which sucked. Absolutely sucked. My car broke in qualifying and then it broke in the races yeah, and then it yeah. wouldn't work again. So I didn't manage to I didn't manage to get through a full race with full power. Which is unlike. I mean, you've been uh, pretty blessed. You've always had good run and the car's Yeah, and I mean, the cars are so simple and reliable as well. Yeah. We've never had an issue like Not a single car in the grid ever has had an issue like what we suffered with, which is frustrating for all the team involved. They worked like dogs all weekend long to try and get the car working again. And we've had to replace a whole loom in the car. We think... That's, oh, really? we think it's one of those, like, there's a doggy liar in, wire in the loom somewhere that's just, start, like, that's the only thing that we can put it down to at this point. So, yeah. terrible weekend for me. The worst part is it looked like we had the pace. Yeah. It looked like we had the pace. Yeah, from uh, what you saw. You yeah, were. I was expecting, I was expecting a podium finish overall for the weekend and, you know, like keeping up with the front one, I was yeah. battling for yeah. battling for positions at the front all weekend long was what it was looking like it was going to be, um, and then yeah, three laps into qualifying, my shifter broke of all things, and so I didn't get to set a qualifying lap, um, and then first race I went from seventh to fourth in the first two corners, so we're loving life, and then the car lost power, and that was it, weekend done. So that's the update on that, that front. Was, that's that's <laughs> the most frustrating. Oh, weekend, mate. It's, it? it's a combination it's of... It's actually quite surprising because normally it's been so good and you just... Yeah, and not, not just my worst weekend, but it was the weekend where I was looking like it was going to be my most competitive. Yeah, so which makes it even harder. Exactly right. Yeah. It makes the loss so much worse. Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll come back. Yeah. We'll come back. Yeah. The, the full calendar has been announced. So for those who don't know, I can't even remember if we've talked about this. The High Pressure Championship has been given the title Australians Driver. No, we Australian haven't because I know you were hanging shit. You guys, you and Harvey were. Yeah. Gab. Gab. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Have a bit of fun. Yeah, um, so deserved or not, it's there. Um, and we've got a full schedule now. So we're going to race at the best end this year yeah we're going to race at the new wakefield park this uh, year as well, we'll as done. a number of other rounds in victoria so it's going to be a good year yeah it'd be big big it's going to it's be a very six, good year. six race six yeah, rounds six yeah. Rounds, yeah and what they're thinking about doing is we've had one of our other star drivers noah sands had to miss the first weekend because he was sick and we've had last season we had a few other people who had to miss rounds and that sort of stuff as well so what they're thinking about doing is six round championship but everyone gets to knock off their worst round so that means oh, if, if you yeah. have to miss around for business, like people like you come and race, yeah, right? So yeah. if, if you have to miss around for business or or you have a shit round like me or like Noah, you're sick, you get a bit of or, a... or like the guy who who won by by B's dick, won the round, yeah. um, Ricky Capo, awesome guy. Yeah. If he wants to come back later on, he can miss around and not worry about it and still potentially fight for the championship as well. Uh, so it works well for everyone. So that's what they're considering doing, which yeah. I'm hoping for because that means I can just I should, yeah. wipe that round clear. Yeah. It does mean for the rest of the year we have to be perfect, but, I mean, that's technically... Oh, that's what you so. want to do anyway. So exactly you know, right. Yeah. Exactly right. So, yeah, interesting Interesting on that front. What else did we have happen in March? There was another big thing on my oh, list. Oh, mate. Erebus came and filmed here. Yeah, that was good, yeah. They, 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 there's obviously a few people that we've known throughout the, the journey now with VH and so on, and yeah. obviously a few people changing camps and so on, and, and, and a couple from Tickford have gone now across. And uh, yeah, yeah, they gave us a call, and, 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 and well, we know that both the drivers, well, at the time, obviously Todd and, and Jack, I've had some timing with Jack in the past when I was at Dutton's. We did some sponsorship with AB was there at Techno. So, yes, yeah, so, so known a lot of these guys for a while. And obviously, yeah, it was good that they came here. By chance, we happened to have two black Camaros of chance. We couldn't fucking believe that. That was a fluke. So they did a bit of a fun and games, which is really good to see. Like a lot of the V8 guys now, a lot of the marketing things, they're, they're actually... I remember they're getting speak, very creative. <laughs> yeah, and I remember saying this to, 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 to Thomas last year when they were doing some of that fun stuff. And I said to him, you know, I said, look, keep doing it because it actually it's awesome. makes you more relatable and people can relate more yeah. to just being goofy and being yourself or yeah. just having a bit of fun. Uh -huh. And you're not these 
you know, princesses sort of like, you know, yeah, like, exactly as they right. say, with, I guess the Formula One, the prima yeah. donna. Which is stuff. the new way of marketing because back in, back in the Nigel Mansell day, that was how you did it. You needed to be the prima donna that no yeah. one knew about. That was how you yeah. kept as a figure. But these days with social media, it's yeah. the opposite. Total. It's about coming down and yeah. showing every part of your life. That's how you... That's it. And, and I think yeah. it's fantastic. And I'm seeing now a lot of the other teams are doing now. They're starting to ramp up their social, which is good. You know awesome. what I mean? It just... Tickford are killing it. The Tickford stuff are that doing, Tickford yeah, put Tickford out. Tickford are doing a fantastic awesome. job. They started awesome. doing some really good stuff last year and they've just kept the momentum going. Yeah. And I remember having this conversation with, 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 with both Thomas and his old man. I think it was a Bathurst or whatever it was. I knew we were talking about it. We said, mate, this is fucking cool. Just it's keep cool. doing yeah. it. Yeah. And they are. It's just fantastic. Yeah. And and it's just becoming more relatable. They're all becoming people can, yeah, feel a bit more of an in tune with them. Yeah. I think it's great. No, so yeah, so they did some stuff here, a bit of fun stuff. Both rocked up in the. They had a rental car, so we'd given them the Camaros. One we sold, and one yeah. we just bought. So they both drove and turned up as if they were lost, and then went to the F1 wall. If some people don't know, we've got the largest F1 wall, wall, wall mural in the world, thanks to a very very dear friend that did it for us, which is a very very dear friend of JP's, Tom. He did that for us, but they, I think in the video, Jack and Todd both go to Lewis, hey, where's the track or something yeah. or like that? And then they said to take off. So it was a bit of bit of a tongue-in-cheek, bit of a skit, but yeah. it was great. You now they could have gone anywhere else, but yeah, no, it was very nice that they just came and did that here, and that was good, yeah. Yeah, now we've got Taupo and Brody's back. Yeah, that's big too, which is fantastic, mate. I mean, who knows? There's, I'm sure there's a million stories out there. We've heard stuff, don't care. The fact that he's back, and that's great. And and hopefully, you know, there's still plenty of racing to go. And it would like it would like to see them retain and win the championship again. And I mean, yeah. a bit. What will be interesting though is to see how Brody is in that car compared to say say. Todd now it just, will be yeah and and I think that's where we're going to see you know how the car stacks up with obviously no, I'm not going to say a better or the right driver at the end yeah. of the day he is the outstanding he is the current champion yeah that yeah. car got him to the podium so it'll be interesting to see how uh, how he goes yeah we're boy. supposed to be the Tau Pau but to, 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 but we're not going too yeah. much going on fuck so I think oh. yeah, it's fantastic that he's back You've just reminded me some beef went down after the AGP round with, do you remember when Cam Waters got shoved into the wall? Oh yeah, it was fucking yeah. full Did on. you see the open letter after that? The open The open le- letter to Cam Waters? The open letter. From Ned Whiskey? I think it was from Ned Whiskey. Oh, let me see if I can find it really quick because this is, this is worth talking about. You want to talk about good marketing? This is good marketing. Did I hear about Here that? we go. Open letter from Ned Australian Whiskey. So Ned Ned is the sponsor for, for the, the Penrite Pen- car, Correct, yeah. which is the car that crashed into Cam Waters. So background history for those who weren't watching, those who don't know. The Ned car and Cam Waters car were, I think, one and two, battling for the lead or basically, close to yeah, it, right up front. Yeah. And close to the end of the race, they <laughs> came in contact and took each other out, basically. Yeah, it's fucked them. Cam, Cam Waters was half up on the wall when his car had stopped. Yeah, fucked them. And it was big news story because yeah. they were leading the race, they'd taken each other out, right? Yeah. So the sponsor of the Penrite car, Ned Whiskey, publishes an open letter to Cam Waters, which states... G'day, Cam. Hope you're well. Hell of a weekend at the Aussie Grand Prix. We were stoked to see yourself and our boy Matty Payne on the front row for this evening's race. It was a great move by Matty out the back to take back the lead. Unfortunately, all got a bit mis- it all got a bit messy at the end of that lap. This is where it gets good. You see, at Ned Whiskey, we love being passionate, brave, and daring. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. That's why our whiskey has flavours of beautiful honey, vanilla, and caramel. <laughs> Maybe next time you run up the back of someone so you're they're off the racing line, don't expect them to know what you're going to do next. But all good, that's racing. Move on and we'll see you tomorrow for the rest of the race weekend. <laughs> Use our code SALTYCAM for free Australia-wide <laughs> shipping. Oh, that's big. <laughs> How that's, good is that? That's very... Well done, touche to the marketing Ned team. Ned Whiskey, well, well done. done. Well that done. That is just fantastic. That is very, very, very intelligent. Amazing. Yeah, whoever, well whoever at that team saw that crash and thought, here's what we're going to do. Promotion. Amazing. Yeah. Just no, that, that amazing. Is good. Promo you, you cap- gold, Salty Capitalised on the situation very quickly. Salty Cam, that's, that's, that's a cat. It's brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah, I had a good laugh when I saw that. Just fantastic. All right, so, car of the week. To. Someone asked me whose fault I can't say because I'm friends of both camps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Switzerland, mate. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> you got equal arguments on both sides of the camp. Mate, it's with stuff like that. No, no, no you... I got out. Oh, you've Mate, I'm fucking mates with both sides. I'm staying out of it, mate. I can tell you from first-hand experience, when you are around three or four other cars in a pack like that coming through a corner, you've got two sets of eyes. You can look in one direction. If you're very good, maybe two. Maybe, yeah. But in a car, your visibility is your two wing mirrors. In, in a V8 supercar, you've Especially got your top yeah, mirror as well. Fucking, mate, you can't and just shit, straight mate. ahead, right? So you're trying to focus on... The car in front of you that you can see out your windscreen. You know the car around, that you Jack. can see in your right wing mirror somewhere yeah. in your blind spot. The car in your left mirror somewhere yeah. in that blind spot. And the, and guy the behind car you. behind you that you're trying to see in that mirror. So you're trying to watch in front of you your right mirror, your left mirror, and your top mirror yeah. all at the same time. And, and race. everything is changing. It's milliseconds. Milliseconds, right? You just can't watch everyone. So there's an element of faith. There's an element that people are going to yes. leave room and that the people behind you are watching you to react off what you're doing because you're trying to focus on the person in front of you. And you hear that when the commentators say that's amazing driving by both drivers not taking each other out because they're spatial awareness and Correct. that's usually intelligent, Correct. experienced drivers. Yeah. So occasionally you get a window of time. It may yeah. only be a few tenths of a second where two or three of the drivers in that pack are all not looking in this one yeah. space of track for that only just a couple of and tenths and that's what happens and that's when something happens and as far as I'm concerned that's what happened there they only just clipped each other it was just enough to I didn't think it would be that yeah it's fucking the way they yeah, turned yeah, it yeah 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 I thought they were both going to drive up and keep going it uh, didn't look that bad yeah uh, but yeah look that's how it happens it's just it's just Racing a split it, second thing when you're so close together it only takes a tiny deviation look, of your direction yeah I mean and you're fucking on the brakes turning yeah. and you're fucking yeah. it's, there's so much no, going on there's too much going on yeah. and yeah that's what's about yeah. racing incident mate yeah so, car of the week. Here at Y2G, we've got some pretty cool stuff. And today we're going to talk about probably the king of the showroom at the moment. Yeah, would you, would it would be... That? Oh, yeah, def. I mean, look, depends on definition of king. So, yeah, you know, that's a fair point. I mean, but in saying it, in terms of the supercar, it is certainly one of the granddaddies. I mean... Yeah. The Jaguar XJ220. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I'm a bit, you know, a bit older than you, but, you know, it was the car that... You know, people had up in their 90s, had up in the wall because, you know, it was first car to hit the 220 or 217 or whatever it Didn't made. quite but, get there. Yeah, but, you know, it was the first car to, to just change everything in that sense of where it was and when the development back in the 80s and, you know, Tom Walkinshaw and what the car was meant to be, but what it ended up being. And it sort of like half became yeah. a bit of a cult because of that. Yeah. Well, I wanted to briefly yeah. touch on that. So for those who don't know the story of the XJ220, it was sort of born just before the financial crisis. Yeah. For, one of the many yeah, financial yeah, crises. Yeah. And it was promised as this all-wheel drive V12, absolute yes. top, top, top. Unbelievable. Everything. Everything. And then the crisis hit, financial crisis hit. They lost like half their orders. They'd already started yeah. trying to make a car at that point. Yeah, they were just taking the big worst, orders, big money. Worst then, possible situation for Jaguar. Majority of people cancelled. Yeah. And so they had to change the car. They, they dropped the all-wheel drive, went back to rear-wheel drive. They dropped the V12 and ended up going with V6. a turbo V6, which, to be fair, is still a monster of an Well, engine. the funny thing was is the V12 was meant to produce just on 500 horsepower. And this is more. Right? <laughs> this he does more. Yeah. I mean, Tom Walkinshaw, they were always developing the V6 and racing and so on, and they put yeah. it in there and, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mammoth of a car. So it's a four-speed manual. no. It is. I'm pretty sure it's four speed. Is it not four speed? No, she's five speed. She's five speed? Oh, yeah. five speed. Yeah, right, no, five speed. Six, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, five yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Right. yeah. Um, and it pulls. Pulls hard. Pulls Look, it really does. hard. It does. I mean, for what it is, it's it's you know, it's a big car. That's what people don't realise. because a Massive. Look, most people haven't seen one in real life. No. And when people come in here, and obviously we're not open to the public, so it's by appointment, so when, you know, we don't carry on like some dealers saying, oh, we've got this, 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 this. We don't unless they've inquired about that, well, I wouldn't tell them about that. But when they do turn up and you see people's faces like, what the hell is that? It's a spaceship. It is. And you yeah. think back in the 90s, oh, like, mate. come on, man. Mate. I mean, like, it was out of control. Yeah. And you look at it and it still looks like something just so modern and current. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And yeah, it's it's the thing that really staggers you is the length. It's that's it's just so. It's like it looks like a bus. It's in terms of how long it is. It's the overhang on massive. both the front and rear is 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 massive. And then when you when you actually look at the wheels and the the rims and the tires and back then, you know what I mean, like. Yeah, colossal. We're still running 14-inch, 13, 14-inch rims back in the 90s yeah. on cars, and, you know, you got something like that, yeah. which is out of control. It's like all four wheels put together make one back wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you think about it back then, and even now, I mean, you look at the car and, you know, the the, the, the it does stop everyone that comes in here. They just see it, then they're like, what is that? And it is an amazing car. I mean, like, the sad thing is, is you know, there's only four in Australia, and... That's one of them, and a lot of people still don't know really what they're about. They never really, no. They just sort of a bit lost in the ether, you know. They really yeah. are, and a lot of people will look at something else over that. But when you weigh up the other cars that were around at its time, you know, EB One Ten, Bugatti, all those sort of yeah. fucking cold cars. Yeah, that's the only one that hasn't really grant. Well, right? this that's this just, was this, this the, was the, crazy the thing. speed record car that the McLaren F1 beat. This was that's it. it. This is yeah. the top of the food chain. Yeah. McLaren took it off that car. Yeah, but you, but everyone knows the McLaren F1 was the fastest car in the world. Not many people would remember that this was actually the car before it. So it was a bit sad because it was a bit of an orphan, bit of a debacle, a bit of a flop, but not. And then it's had a bit of a cult stage. It's come back again. This is one of the few cars that I've said that. That the world hasn't really woken up to it yet, and when yep. they do, it'll go crazy. Oh, so that's what I was going to ask. Do you reckon it's undervalued? Because oh, of fuck that? yeah! It is so undervalued. <laughs> it really is. I mean, you know, on a on a global scale, and that's why I call these cars global scale because a lot of these cars are advertised overseas, and that is the best pound for pound history to two own a car. It's actually got quite an interesting history. It's really low cases, isn't it? 3,700 miles. Yeah. It's got all its original tool kit and books and brochure, like the, 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 you know, the special brochure you got. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got this special little tool kit that comes with it. The car is just a time or 3,700 Ks. And mathematically on a global scale, when you look at that car, because there's, there's, I think, uh, there's half a dozen advertised currently in the world, but they only made 69 right-hand drive cars. So... That's obviously one of the factory right and drive cars. And for said four in Australia, that one's probably the best Providence. I know a couple of the other histories on the other cars. And anyways, so that car there, two owner car, interesting first owner was an arms dealer. Wow. Yeah, now that's fucking cool. I mean, that's who's buying that kind of car in a financial crisis, right? <laughs> well, I was only a young kid then, but there was a big cat in the arms world, which I just remember my folks and people... And I'll never forget his name because his name was Agnan Khashoggi. No, that's, wow. Yeah, correct, yeah. So that was a, people a bit older will know, he was a big arms dealer. And this cat that owned that car was like another Abdul something or other and Mayfair, like Grouse and yeah, all that yeah, stuff yeah. in the books. He was his partner. And there was something that happened and then, you know, wow. obviously authorities and that sort of stuff. And then, and then somehow my client was able to attain the car from the UK, left it there and then brought the car out. Full on. But it just, that in itself is really cool when it comes to the history and, yeah. and it's Spa Silver, which was the launch colour because you had, you had, you had uh, was it Sepang Blue or some shit? There was a dark blue, there was a green, there was a burgundy, but the Spa Silver, which is that car, that colour is the launch colour. So I think they ended up making, they initially were going to do 500, then obviously everyone was cancelling. They only sold, I think they, I think they built 280. 281, you know, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, 281. Only 69 right-hand drive cars. So as you narrow it down, like, you know, we, we, we talk about, you know, classic collectible cars, that sort of stuff. As you narrow it down, you try to go for the sort of, I guess, the holy grail, if you will. Like, you know, the best colour, the lowest production, the lowest mileage, the best history. Yep. That's what you try to do. Well, on a global scale, that's it. Why did you fucking sell it? Well, it's only because it's such a rare car that there's only a handful of people in the world. Correct. And there's there's been eight or nine cars on the global market for the last eight to ten months, and we've had that on the market about six or seven months. Yes, we've been very close, but just haven't been able to get the numbers, either the taxes in the country or... What are we trying to sell it for, can we say? It's cheap. It's a fucking million dollars. There you go. That's cheap. Now, again, I apologise because a million dollars is not cheap, What's an F40? Car. Well, I was about to say, mate, F40s have 
quadrupled. A decent F40 today is $4 million, which is fucking ridiculous that considering 1,300 odd cars. So many have been raped and pillaged and bashed. 95% of them don't have genuine mileage. It's just the facts, mate. Yeah. You know I mean, it is what it is. But it is the superhero mega car yeah. that everyone knows of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone. F40, F40, F40. Like, I got to a stage where, you know, it shouldn't be what it is. Yeah. But it just is. Yeah. It shouldn't be more than that. But it is. Uh, That's a rarer car. Yeah. That's a special car. You know what I mean? So one day when people wake up, I mean, you can buy them cheaper than that. You can buy them for, I've seen them, you know, about probably 800,000 Aussie equivalent when you do the mats. Yep. But no history, they are fucked. They've done more mileage. Yeah. There's no real provenance. Probably a different colour and left-hand drive. Yeah. So mathematically, yes, that is the best XJ220 on the global market as we sit here. Now, Murphy's Law, and Murphy's Law, I love Murphy's Law because Murphy's Law goes both ways. So hopefully that car should be sold because we're talking about it and we are talking to other kind of people and they've been dragging their feet. So hopefully it might get some momentum going on See that how car. We go. But yeah, very special car, great investment car, very undervalued. It's something that you put away and God knows in the next 10, 20 years when Jaguar is probably no more or Jaguar is just fucking plug-in shit, um, people will look at that and go, that was such an iconic car. Yeah, the F40 and F50, or also F40, EB110, all those cars probably shouldn't have had so much grandeur and that'd be left in the shadow. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a special car. Yep. Definitely. So, there you go. Very Undervalued if you're looking for... Massively undervalued. And don't listen pickings. to me. Just look, listen to any of the, the major car experts around the world. <laughs> So, we've got some questions from the audience again. Oh, okay, so, yep, sure. Yep, yep, we're going to try and get some you of for, these every single thank week. Thank you for coming through. We didn't get all through yeah. the last time anyway, so, yep. Yeah, so, first one is from Ben Realizer, and this is mm. sort of on topic of what we've just been discussing. What would you say is the current state of the car market, up or down? Fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real clip right there. <laughs> hey, hey, everyone knows me, knows me how I is. When we're busy, we're busy. When it's quiet, it's quiet. It is what it is, mate. Well, we start off the year good, right? Yeah, well, normally, you know, January, February is a quiet period for this demographic. You know, people, December, you know, it's, it's holiday houses, it's beach houses, it's going away, it's holidays overseas, it's boats, it's all of those factors. And that's the focus, and we get it. Yeah. And, and the market has been, I mean, you speak to anyone in our field, but even in the normal, you know, chop shop we call just your normal mum and dad stuff, market's been all over the place, you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, the market has been, has been good, like we've been blessed that we've had, you know, we've had, you know, some good deals and we've had some good cars come through. But yeah, generally, like I was again talking the last couple of days, a lot of dealers, that sort of stuff has just fallen off a cliff again. Interesting. And and it's interesting to see where there's certain sector, certain sectors of the market which should be moving but haven't moved for whatever reason you don't know. And how I gauge it is, I look at sort of our inventory and I look at other cars and granted we you know we play in a space that there's really not much choice okay that's the only one on the market that's probably the best one on the market of what's out there that's the only one technically on the market that's technically the only one because of who owns the fucking thing who owns the fucking thing <laughs> i mean that's 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 you know that's that's virtually one of the only ones on the market it's a one owner car that's definitely the only one on the market because we only only see you seven Oh, mate, yeah, there's there's a there's a handful of those, and that's the second cheapest in the country. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> that's the only one on the market, and the one close to me is a hundred thousand dollars more. So nothing will ever change about always niche market yeah. individual stock. So there's not a lot of choice. Yeah. But in saying that, but when you do look, and there are a couple of old, you know, similar alternatives, or you know, again, like there might be maybe another two or three cars of similar ilk, and they're not selling. Well, then you know it's not you. If your car's already the cheapest or one of the best value, or I just believe we do it better yeah. the way we do things. I mean, the way we do our photography. I mean, you know, photography is just just known now. Everyone in the world knows the way I look, the way we do our cars yep. and the way we've done it. And, and it's obviously credit to you. The way we've just done the spin and how we do it, there's a lot of people copying, which I just laugh at now. It's um, a compliment. Ah, uh, yeah, no, nah, fuck you, compliments. I hate that. <laughs> but in saying that, it's just, you know, it is what it is. They got no fucking intelligence, so they want to copy. But in saying that, it's it's these are the things that you look at and you go, well, you're doing your sort of niche, you're doing that. That car should have sold. It hasn't sold for whatever reason you don't know. Yep. And 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 the funny thing is sometimes you know, I'll buy one, sell it, buy another, sell it, buy another, sell it, buy the fourth, 
fucked. Should have yeah. bought it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's happened a few times. You know what or, I mean? or the opposite. Doesn't sell, doesn't sell, doesn't sell. Three people all at once. Murphy's Law. Yeah. Always, anyone in the industry knows this. We call it Murphy's Law. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do things on purpose, play Murphy's Law. I'll put the car that I need to sell right in the back corner, up the top, right at the back, waiting for the prick to walk and go, can I drive that car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. So you play on that. So literally, yeah. I can't. I can't believe the amount of times that what I have seen is different dealerships getting the exact same car at the same time. I, I will never forget the. I've been working at Lawbeck for like a year, and we had a three hundred and sixty challenge to Dali come in. First one I'd ever seen. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Definitely the first one that, that I'd seen at Lawbeck, and that week when we posted it, Dutton had one in as well. Same spec. Same stripe. And it's just like, I've never seen one of these come up on the market while I'm in the year that I'm here and two in the one week. And that same oh, it's thing... like the Turbo S exclusive. It's happened so many, many times. How many times I'm going, oh, for fuck's sake, there's only five or four in the country or three in the country and then every prick goes on the market. It's crazy, isn't I it? I can't believe it's it. It's crazy. I've seen it happen like half a dozen times now. And I've and taken my cars off. Bizarre. Like, oh, what's the point? It's there's bizarre. only There's only two or three people in the country at the moment that are going to buy and they've got... Yeah choice of three uh, yeah. I just take it off the market it's crazy. just get into a bidding war yeah, it's crazy. it is funny how that works it's crazy very funny isn't yeah. It? yeah it'll continue to go there I can't work it out so our next question comes from Viper GTSR and they're asking when's our next big car event the STG one was awesome <laughs> good question oh mate good if I question. had a dollar for every time I've been asked that over the last fucking I've been three or four the messages coming in on Instagram um, been crazy yeah yeah I, I wouldn't say I would have paid for the bad boys for myself and kept it, but no, but it's been a lot. And 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 yes, the last one was epic. It was. Can't thank enough. It was out of control. But I'm working through some formalities at the moment. <laughs> there are some people out there who don't like what we're doing, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of haters fucking... Yeah, hey. we'll get there. We, there will be another one. Yeah, no, no. we are doing it. One. Oh yeah, I've got the best fucking lawyers. Yeah, that's one good thing I have. It's yeah, the best lawyers, gotta, best accountants, and we got to do some paperwork. Yeah, we're just doing some paperwork. So we're doing it at the moment, and it will be done. <laughs> and then once it's done, mate, it's fucking on gloves off, old. mate. It'll yep. be on yeah. for fucking Donkey Kong. I'm gonna so, light the suburb on fire. Oh, mate. So yeah, <laughs> so stay tuned. It's not far away, and then once we do it, we're gonna do it. With an absolute TNT, yeah, it's going to give you an idea. I was hoping to do one Grand Prix weekend, but that didn't work out. No, um, but that, is, that gives you any idea of when we can do it. We're going to do it. It's, it's yeah. coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Like I said, and we and and once we get through all the the the, the red tape bullshit, we will we will announce it. And uh, yeah, it's going to be epic. So stay tuned. Perfect amount of time oh, for fuck. today's topic. The R eight is dead. We'll see again. I'm not that fast because I was never a big R8 person, but in saying it, I'll carry an R8 over a Gaudo. Look, I I think what it meant, <coughs> especially the Gen 1 R8, what it meant yeah, that's for my the car. supercar industry as a whole yeah. and the place that it held. Do you think about like 2008, that car came out? Yeah. Uh, 2007, 8, and that it came looked out. It was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It really, really was. Yeah. So it, you know, it did exactly what it was meant to do and yeah. probably. Audi were probably yeah. even taken back at how successful it was. Yeah. For me, like I said, I mean, I've always said it, there's a couple of cars that I definitely need to rebuy or buy and then put back in my collection, the collection that the fucking sell the fund and all that shit. And as yeah. we go, for me, 4.2 Daytona Grey carbon fibre blades on the side, manual 4.2, which is... You wouldn't go the V10? No. no. Really? 4.2. That wow. V8 is a fucking great. It's a cool engine. It's it a great revs, engine. revs, man. It's a great... It's, yeah. You know, it's a V8 that drives a little bit like a Porsche GT3 engine. It just revs it just and revs. revs. And revs. It's just yeah. an awesome. And I was looking at trying to buy a wagon a little while ago, but... Yeah, because there's so many money. cars with that engine. Yeah, yeah. just a, a B7 manual. Yeah. That's my favourite. Yeah. And, and yeah, no, that I think it's a great car, that one. But I didn't like the way it ended up and all the shit that it had and... Yeah, I just like I said, I, I, yeah, the the first gen R eights were the ones I preferred. I didn't they like just it. look amazing. It's like me, I prefer the first gen C sixty threes. Yeah, I don't like yeah. the new C sixty. Well, not the new yeah. one. The new one's a fucking disgrace. Didn't yeah. even look at that at the stand at yeah. the yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. I just walked past it that many times. I go, oh, yeah. I just see the new C sixty three. I went, nah, no. Nah. I thought it was. I didn't even register. Yeah. The only car I sat in 
in the suite was the G63. Remember the other yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to find <laughs> Sean. I'm walking around the whole suite trying to find Sean. Mate, and I just and he was this, in a G class. I was just sitting in the G63 on the phone, and it was the <laughs> best because no one could find you, and it was just quiet. <laughs> And yeah, and I left my fucking cap in there the night before, and I was looking oh, for it everywhere. But so funny. So that was good or bad. Actually, before we get back to the R8, yes, I spoke to the the team lady that came out to talk to us. Yeah, and she told me that the 2026 Formula One regulations, the power units for the cars will be 50 percent electric, 50 percent petrol engine. So currently, they use the. The electric the is like a boost and yeah. they regenerate it and it's just yeah. like for overtakes and stuff. Yeah. From 2026 onwards, that's 500 horsepower. That's half the power of the car will be that electric motor. Not great, is it? Yeah. That's a me, big that step towards Formula E that, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And to me, that makes, well, what's the car going to sound like? I don't know because now the engine only makes 500 horsepower. And I mean, look, you can straight pipe anything. I was going to say, loud, put some straight pipes to get it past that. Yeah. yeah. But, <coughs> but it is, uh, what is that going to mean for the racing? That's well, very I'm, interesting. I'm, I'm, look, for me, it doesn't matter because I was blessed to be in that period where you had your Schumacher dominance and your Senna yeah. dominance. And, you know, I was a young kid watching yeah. that and that's what really fell in love with the sport. So for me... The way the sport's going, I'm really not that fast. Like I said, yeah. once Lewis retires for me, that was the last of that Fernando Alonso, Kimi yeah, Raikkonen, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. era. I'm done. Yeah, because real be golden shit. age. Yeah, it'll be yeah. shit, mate. Yeah, yeah. And, and so some of the videos that. of like race restarts from the V10 era and stuff, the noise. Oh, Come on, <laughs> man. It just fucking amazing. Epic. Amazing. Epic. Anyway, back to the R8. So. Yes. When it was brought out in 2007 in Australia, they were sticker 250, 260-ish. Mm, yeah, so 300 would change by the time you got any decent Some options, options and, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. which which at the time was the lower end of the supercar market. What else was there, there at the time? Oh, yeah. Just before sort of 458 came in. Yeah, you're 430 um, running still, so it was about 500 or something. Yep, yep. Yeah, well, you got, you got, you got... End of the go. You got 997 oh. turbos are coming in then. 07, 08, you know, that was 350, 400, I guess yep. they were back then. Yeah. Yeah, Galato, and 7, 8, the, the first gen yeah. Galato. You got into the second gen in yeah. like 9, 10, which I'd never, I'd have a R8 or always, R8 any day. Well, I've had more R8 than I have Lambo. Oh, yeah, we've had one Lambo here. I, yeah. One. And yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, I... Yeah. What are they going to do, though? What are they going to do? What are you going to replace it with? Audi, just that market segment now gone for them. Well, yeah. So, so I mean, we'll get on this topic because one of the things I want to sort of talk about is what replaces the space that it filled because it really was, and I don't really want to call it this, but it was, in a way, the entry-level supercar. If you were someone that was interested in, in your big hitters and your Lambos and your Ferraris and all that sort of stuff and you want to enter that market... You go and grab an, an, a, a first gen R8 with a couple thousand Ks on it. Yeah. You pay half what, what a Lambo or whatever it is. And you've still got. Still has a lot of fucking theatre. Exactly. Still right. rock up in a fucking exactly. first gen R8 and people yeah. are like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So it was, it was a brilliant car for that. And yep. uh, our mate, we had him on the podcast, Rob Summons. He had one yep. for yep. quite a while. It was a V8, but it was an auto. Yep. And that was an awesome car. We yep. just we'd completely straight apply. Pipe that yeah, and just it was ripped crazy. around in it. We won Targo Florio yeah. in it. Had a great time. It's just a ripper car. Yeah. They are, in, in a some sense, you could call it a big golf because it is still just a Volkswagen Audi product, especially with the auto. The auto, for me, kills it. It needs to be the manual. Um, especially when it wasn't a dual clutch. Yeah. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, it was trying definitely, to the e gear. Yeah, yeah. It's just a shit single clutch. Mate. Mate. Yeah. Mm. Trying to park them. Fuck. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's just yeah. shit. And, and that's the real Achilles heel. That's why I think the manual cars and as they're going, they're yeah. even, even a lot of the people around the so-called experts or car aficionados are saying a first-gen manual V8 yeah. will be a beautiful car. Yeah. To have. So to, to give you an idea, just a few years later, so by 2012, yeah. a V8 manual R8 was 300 plus options. Fuck, it went up, didn't it? A manual V8 R8. Yeah, so in a couple of years, up to 300K. But 2012, 458 Spider yeah. had been brought out. No, six, that was 600. Was 600 yeah, yeah. So you're walking around dealerships looking at your next supercar. 
RA is 300, 458 is 600. But, I mean, that's why they, I suppose they were so successful. Correct. It because it really so was much. that entry level. It yeah. was whatever. If you wanted to get in the supercar yeah. market, you didn't want to spend a million dollars. That's the way to do it. Yeah, right? You still no. get the looks. It still looked every bit as good as a Ferrari yeah, did. 100%. Um, with an exhaust, it sounded every bit as good. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. just It was a fantastic product, and it filled. I loved it because especially when I was sort of coming up to my late teenage years, they were like under 200 grand and they were like if you wanted to get into yeah. the market yeah. oh that's yeah. not a bad with German way to do it reliability yeah exactly right exactly um, and right and technology that yeah. worked you got that whole Tony Stark thing going oh. on just a ripper car and I, I would call it an icon I would call I would it an yeah icon. I, I, I didn't like the way it ended up like but the, that's with a lot of cars and that's you know I'm just seeing certain morphing of brands and or a model range and how it just yeah, where it ended, where it started to where it ended up, and yeah, yeah, I like the pureness of them. Yep. Hence, again, yep. back to the '63, the back to the original M3s, you know, E46s, yeah, yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. I didn't yeah. mind the V8, E90, but anyway, so yeah, so yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and Matt, Mikey's got a manual V10, first gen RA. Well, see, so. a manual V. Look again, a lot of people when we've had this, they say, "Well, wouldn't you get a manual V10 because that's so epic?" Yeah, it is, but that. V8 is just such an iconic it is great engine. engine. Yeah. It revs far better than the fucking V10. Yeah, right. Far better. Yeah. And but and I just think it's a bit balanced. balanced. I mean, I've been right. blessed to drive yep. both no, I get quite a few times. And I just think, yeah, that yeah, the gearbox and the autos or the the Artronic shit as, but yeah. the manual's just that open gate with the clink yeah. clink mechanical. Yeah. That's what I like about it. You know, yeah. it's just nice. Yeah. So let's let's come forward to today. Mm. Today's market, I mean, you, we just talked about in 2012 if, when you're looking at 300K versus 600K. Yeah. So nowadays, the R8's gone. We don't have a, quotation marks, entry-level supercar from Audi anymore. Yep. So what fills that gap? So I went and did a little bit of research on what the current sort of that money competitive, was. no, 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 what the sort of competitive car market range. So not your Aventadors, not your hypercars, your LaFerraris, but yeah. your 296, your Hurricane, your 720S. What do yeah. they cost? Yeah. So two nine, no, a, two nine six, two nine a 296. A 296. Fucking 900. Yeah. Well, so there's 660 base, but then you add Ferrari options on and you're a million. <laughs> That's amazing how that works, isn't it? So, yeah. So, so 800 and 900 in reality for a 296. Ferrari by a fucking 246 Dino. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're close close to a million nowadays for for you know comparative to that four five eight six hundred six hundred grand. And back why would in you do that? Buy a four five eight. Yes, I agree. Just agree. buy a four, just five, four five, eight. five eight. And just be happy, and you'll buy the right yeah. car, and you won't do your ass. So a Hurricane Evo five six hundred grand with options. Same deal. McLaren seven fifty S. Same deal. Six fifty ish. Plus options, options. plus options. options are, so that's another eight hundred thousand yeah, yeah. dollar car, yeah, like the exactly. two nine six before exactly. it. Now I will say that McLaren is a beast Which of one? a car, 750. the seven fifty or the seven twenty. Either way, we were at. Uh, I was privileged to have. So um, then, why would you bring it out when you just released the seven six five? Your 720, oh, which is still, yeah. 720, which you, you, the, 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 the fucking chamois still drying on the I, fucking yeah, water. I know. I know. Then you bring out your 765. Oh, no, we're doing 750. It's wild. Oh, but hang on. I'm still making payments on my 720. You've jumped two models. How do I go? Yeah. Oh, we'll upgrade. Yeah, but my ass is falling out. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. Isn't it's it? fucking it's crazy, sad, yeah. mate. So I so buy a 675 LT, buy a 650. Great value, half the price. You know, we, we, we've had a couple of cars which have moved off market, under 350, fantastic car. We're 650 new, I know, because I know what we were paying when they were new. Yeah. And what, what, when we were at Dutton's when they came out, when they first came yeah. out, what they were, what we were buying them for. Yeah. You're not going to lose 300000 like the first bloke. No. You're going to enjoy the car, no. and they're just, I think that's yeah. the ones to buy. Well, I can yeah. only stick with what we buy, and I don't buy 600s and 540s and yep, 570s. 570s yeah. and, is there a 520? No. That's a BMW, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. yeah. No. So, yeah, so technologically from a, from a speed perspective, and I didn't realise this until recently, that McLaren is a proper beast of a car. I went to Phillip Island with a private group of guys, nine guys, yeah. hired the track out for two days. Yeah, that's right. Per person, prices for a track day, ph- phenomenal what they were paying. But that's how you do it when you get the money. Okay. So these nine guys trucked down their supercars for two days at Phillip Island by themselves, and there was, let me think, 
Hurricane STO, couple of McLaren 720s, couple of GT4 RSs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. GT3, 992 GT3. A couple of those fucking Alpine 110, a couple other bits and bobs. Ah, we'll Nine him. The For reference, the fastest GT4 RS, which was having the wheels driven off of it, yeah. uh, like race car speed, Probably, yeah. uh, or race, race car driver pace, like yeah. he was very close to the limit of the car. He was doing 141s around Phillip Island. I should say 138. What happened? Um, 138 in my head for some reason. And yeah. that was on uh, decent tyres. So, so he's gone. He's gone all right. Well, they come um, with like fucking Michelin Cups. Sport two fucking point yeah, zero yeah, eight yeah. ten nine. Yeah. So so there's your 12. benchmark. A one forty one is a is a GT four R S on yep. that day. Yep. Brand new car. Yep. Um in the afternoon of the first day, one of the guys brought some slicks and bolted them onto his seven twenty S. Oh yeah. Um so slicks a little bit faster, but <coughs> the difference between a uh, fully fledged semi slick like an AO fifty and an actual slick in terms of pure speed isn't that much. The really? difference is the slick lasts a lot longer. Oh, right. Okay, but the yep. actual speed isn't that different. No. So he's put slicks on his 720S and sent out Josh Buchan, Josh Buchan, I don't know oh, yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah. Yep. A TCR driver. Yep. He's driving GT4 and TCR yep. and a bunch of other things this year. A very quick guy. And he did in this road-going 720, which has been tuned and has slicks on, a 133 around Phillip Island. To put that into perspective, the last time we went to Phillip Island for a GT3 race round with GT3 cars, the Audi R8 GT3s, yeah, the Mercedes AMG yeah, GT3s, yeah, yeah. which was a couple of years ago, when we went there to check that out, their race pace was 131s. Yeah. This guy in a road going 720 Having with crack. just slicks bolted on, did a 133, two seconds off. Unbelievable pace from a road car. Yeah. No GT3 RS is doing that. I can tell you right now. You just cannot make up the time with 850 horsepower down the straights. You just can't. It's madness. Wow. Absolute madness. Yeah. So I've got a lot of respect for McLarens now after seeing that yeah, but, because they are a very capable car. Yeah, but see, when we used to do the charity mm. drive days back in Dutton days, we used yep. to take the cars there and had the opportunity to drive them on the track. Mm -hmm. Now, granted... And we're going to go fucking full flanked and all that sort of shit because of insurance and that sort of stuff. But in saying that, that was when I had the appreciation for McLaren because to have it on a track, it was designed for that. Yeah. In its battle mode and it's all aero and all active yeah. aero and uh -huh. the way it tucks in, you're driving down the straight and yeah. around the, You go, I get it. Yeah. Very impressive. But to jump in it, and go to the shops or go for a cruise chap laps or fucking go down a lot. Go just, it's it's so much car that you yeah. just, you not intimidated, but. I get what you're saying. It's a lot of car for that. It's like fucking, mate, why don't you bring your fucking M60 to a fucking water pistol fight? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's, like it's so much car, yeah. but it's not really enjoying it because it's not in its element. Oh, too and that's, good. That's, don't, does that make sense so to you, good. though? It yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, so that's another 800, 900, 800, $900,000 car. So, Porsche GT3. Here's a potential better priced market. What do you think of 992 GT3? Not an RS, just a no, GT3. No, GT3. no, not a two GT3. I mean, apart from everyone's wanting to get $100,000 over, they're about, depending, the first batch of cars were anywhere from sort of early fours to middle fours, depending. If you had that's a lot good of, value. If you had a lot of value, yeah, that's why they Today's market, that's good value. Still, I mean, that's the way the list price is. It hasn't changed. Yeah. So I might have gone up a percentage or two, yeah. but... Everyone's getting overs for the fucking things. Yeah. That's even, the problem. Even at five fifty, compared to a two nine six at eight hundred and fifty oh, thousand. But, but, but the GT three is good on. value. The two nine six, I forget the two nine six exists. I, I can't even say. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Because it's not even on my radar. I know. I mean, yeah, it's. Bull I would not blow six. Uh, what am I saying? <coughs> eight hundred thousand, eight hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, by the time you totally put money. options on that car, it's big money. There's no fucking yeah. way. Yeah. So, what do you think an Aston Martin Vantage is these days? Oh, uh, they've gone up. They've gone up. They're about they're about under four hundred drive, aren't they? Yeah. So they're three hundred k base, and then you put your options. Yeah. On. But so you get you'll get high threes, low. What fours. people don't realize is options in these cars. And look they're again, a lot of people, expensive. a lot of people, yeah, they don't. And you're you're paying thirty three percent LCT on these options Correct. too. Don't forget. Yeah. So, you know, the luxury threshold is call it eighty would change if you will. So anything above that. 
you know, it's tax upon tax upon tax. That's why, you know, in the past, you've heard me, I'm biggest advocate against the LCT because it's just a fucking rort for the government to get more money because we have no more manufacturing and that's why our cars are so expensive here. And that's why people go, geez, there's a high depreciation. No, what that depreciation is all the bullshit tax that the first bloke pays that the second bloke doesn't pay that just gets thrown off the fucking price of the car. Yeah. And that's the sad thing about it. Yeah. You know, like... You do the cost comparisons to the cars overseas, you're fucking a bit shocked. That's why a lot of people from Europe come in and they're like, fuck, your cars are expensive. Yeah. Here. You think about it, they are. They are, yeah. Because of our taxes, yeah. and it's just bullshit. Uh-huh. It's unnecessary. It shouldn't be yeah. that way. So what fills the gap that the R8 leaves, or what the R8 originally intended to be? My argument is the just AMG buy a good GT. Just fucking supercar. Don't buy a new. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's pretend we're buying new for a second. Uh, I reckon it's the AMG GT. Because well, that's a GTR is too. A, an AMG GTR is 360 base, plus options. Uh, but we're talking 360 base, not 660 base. Like the Ferraris and Lambos. See, so the good thing is there's not so, heaps of options with AMG. That's the good thing about Yeah. Them. You might get carbon yeah. brakes. And, and just a regular GT is less than that. So in today's... Considering considering the a manual v, V8 R8 in 2012 was 300000 mm. An AMG GT today... 2024. $300,000. I think that's good value. Look, it is. I mean, it's it's, again... It's just the buying it new. I just, you know what I mean? To me, oh, yeah, it'll just, fall out of the ass. They all Completely. do. They all it's do. Just, there's so oh, much yeah. value there they within a two year of yeah. first ownership. Oh, mate. So I have someone call an Aventador an investment the other day, and I laughed. What? An Aventador an investment. <laughs> No, okay. an it makes you sleep good at night. An investment. Make, is that what you say? That makes you, that's one of those makes me sleep good at night's an investment. Okay, yeah. mate. No yeah. worries. Okay. So, yeah, no. What do you think fills the gap? Honestly, I was thinking about it, and I, I, I buy a, I buy a. Fuck! I can't struggle. I can't. It's a tricky one because it's yeah. There's for that money. There's a lot of good choice, but in saying that, well, why can't you make a choice? Because I'm struggling to buy new. Yeah, yeah. I can't get my head yeah. around. I just, I've yeah. always said, it. I go to the trade tomorrow. I'd never fucking buy a new car. No fucking way. No, no, no way. No, no. fucking way. No. There's so much value out there in the marketplace. It's not funny. I mean, there's cars out yeah. there that might be 10 years old, 12 years old, yeah. that have lost half their value more. Yeah. Some have lost. 90% of their value. Yeah. Okay, these cars that were four hundred fucking thousand dollars new that you can buy now for forty or fifty thousand. It's mad. Now, mate, they were fucking amazing then and they're fucking still amazing now. Yeah. The only difference is you ain't gonna lose three hundred thousand like the first bloke. Yeah. And it's a car that's they were generally built far better. The engineering, as time has gone on, has got less because cars have now become more of a consumable. So that's why they break down more. The parts go more. So because some of these cars back from those periods were very heav- heavily engineered. Yep. So they are still going strong. Yeah. When I keep going back to the AMGs of those periods, that's why we AMG carry a lot Porsche of them. AMG and Porsche are both amazing. But AMG, Porsche, in that period, the shit that they made was fucking out of control yep. and it's still great. Porsche have retained their value better than, say, AMG have. It just have. But in saying it, yeah, there's just so much. Like I said to someone the other day, you know, he goes, oh, you know, I don't want to get it. You know, I've got 400 grand to spend. I go, just fucking stop for a second. Yeah. Have a think. Have a think. <laughs> okay, right. The average car is around about 300 odd thousand. So it's gone down a bit. It used to be a bit more. But, but in saying that, he's kind of playing, oh, 400 grand. I don't know what to send. I said, you know what I said to him? I said, Fucking put 200 grand in your bank account and we'll find a car for 200 grand. That will give you just as much fucking smiles and enjoyment. But again, it depends on what you're wanting. Yeah. You know, people have different reasons for buying cars and it's not all about the performance. A lot of it's ego, a lot of it's fucking self-conscious, a lot of it's fucking... Lifestyle experience. There's so many different reasons for people buying these cars, which is what I love about them. It's not transport. Um, But to me... I, I, I would probably go with, yeah, the GT AMG if yeah. I had to, even though option. I know that's that's a dying thing. Like, there's really not, is, yeah. that, not much left. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't buy that four-door shit thing. I'd just buy no, the two-door no, thing, which yeah. is just a fucking Panamera grab. Yeah. Or 
I'm much more of a fan now of Aston's with the AMG DNA. Really? Yeah, wow. I, like, I, I was saying to someone not long ago, because I'm a big fan of the F1 edition cars, like, you know, like yeah, right. AMG yeah. did their black series of the F1, which was yeah. their... Now, obviously, Aston have done theirs with the F1 edition, which... Yeah. That's an amazing car. He likes it. Oh fuck yeah, yeah! I, I, I'd like to buy one. We actually was tried to buy one last year, but it was grey, which uh, I wasn't that fussed it needs about. Needs to be green. It needs to be green. Yeah. yeah. I got a client that's got one. Fantastic car, and you heard it. They fucking sound epic, mate. Yeah, yeah. As the pace car of yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. I think that's a nice space to be. Yeah, interesting. That's for a change with options. Yeah. So that's a similar marketplace. Yeah. Two seater. Yeah. I think the drivetrain and everything will be far more reliable than well, Aston's have been. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're talking about similar marketplace with two cars, like the same bloody engine. <laughs> In a way, yeah. In a way. So, yeah, that's that's what I'd probably say, even though the new GT really has lost its way. It's really an SL. Oh, yeah, the new... It's the an new, SL and GT yeah, together. Yeah, it's same weird. platform. So it's, weird. it's, yeah, a little bit of clashing of Yeah, no, when cousins. the four-door GT came out, that was me done. That was... That's there. just an E63 or whatever. Like, well, where... <laughs> that was just a grab for cash against the Panamera market yeah. and the Aston Martin repeat, which they yeah. realised was a shit market, hence they stopped it. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Yeah. All right, so. What would you think? I, it's, uh, I mean, my answer was the AMG GT, but I think yeah. the answer is to what do you buy in that space now that you can't buy an R8 as your entry-level supercar is a second-hand R8. <laughs> 100%. That's... All this has done is, I reckon... Kept the stri- kept the pricing strong on R eights. Yeah, that's all it's done. Yeah. So if we can't get a new one, there's a lot of places that won't cross the camp and go to Lambo. Yeah. So you got to be a certain ilk to to move across to Lambo. Correct. Yeah. And there's, I believe, all they've done now is just reconfirm the strength in the R eight as a good resale car. Yeah, I think the market will correct. They'll start to incrementally move. Certain models will do more than others. But yeah, I think they probably did themselves a favour to the owners. There you go. So we'll finish off with this thought. Yes. I'm going to give you a statement. Mm. I want you to give, my, give me your opinion on it. Mm. You're not a car person if you value the latest tech in a car. If you look forward to doing less behind the wheel, you're a tech person. Yes, 100 fucking percent. I... I that is 100%. Yes, you want the new tech and you like all that shit, but that's just to make life easier. So, you know, I remember one person, we don't carry four-wheel drives, but we happened to trade this particular Range Rover and the fucking chick, um, the woman didn't buy it because it didn't have... Oh, the foot thing for the boot? I wanted to fucking do that up her ass. I was like, <laughs> I was like, are you fucking mad? I thought, oh, it doesn't have that. I went, what? The fucking foot thing? And she's like, yeah. I went, I remember saying, I go, how fucking hard is it to do that? And it already goes up automatically, then you do that. But because we've become so fucking accustomed to expecting all this stuff, that's just it. The Aventador's a disgrace. You shouldn't be able to eat a donut, have a coffee with a smoke, in traffic, 40 degrees, hot outside, air conditioning on, and the car not miss a beat. That should not be an Aventador. That should not be a V12. Yeah. It should be ready to bite you. Yeah. Stall. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm overheating. I'm not getting enough air. It just, that's what it should be. You know what I mean? But no, I think it's, yeah. No. So I'm going to post this this no. statement in the sort of the poll section. Yeah, I want to see what people say. So let's talk about it. What do you think? I'll 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 no. state it again for you just in case you missed yeah, it. Yeah, just first listen time. to this. You're not a car person if you value the latest tech in a car. If you look forward to doing less behind the wheel, you're a tech person. One hundred percent. I think I agree too. No, yeah. no, nothing better when you oh shit, I didn't put that clutch in enough and grab second gear or the engines the car's still cold and you go from first to third back into second from a performance perspective it kills me when i see guys that are working as hard as they can to try and get better lap times and they're driving the car in automatic mode with all of the traction control everything and the car's just you're just pressing the pedals and the car's driving the lap for you where's the skill in that now before I jumped on the sim. We had some people in the sims the other day, so they dumbed the door down. They like they were dumbed down. Might as well be in a fucking yeah. electric car. Yeah. So I've jumped on my sim, 
done it, gone out, gone out to do a lap. And I didn't change anything because they just I hadn't jumped on it since, uh-huh. and I'm like, off the brake, brake assist, steering assist, all this yeah. shit. I'm like, this is fucking terrible. Yeah, it's so I went back in, got out, took everything off, nice, and then came out. What a difference back in car. Reality. But that's the yeah. thing, they allow that. The fact that Ferrari know that their clients are well under the limits of yeah, their cars, they yeah. dumb shit down. Yeah, 100%. So, no, no. I think, yeah, no, I yeah. can't. Let's talk about it. Leave a comment. Yeah. What do you think? Please do. Talk about it next time. All right, we'll finish Thank this you. episode off. To finish, Ben Henson, you'll be dearly missed. Ben Henson, mate, we love you, brother. We'll always miss you. And, yeah, you've, you, you, you've, you've left a big hole by you going, mate, with a lot of people, but, mate, Love you always, brother. I know you'd be upstairs looking down at all of us. And I thank you for the time that we knew you. All the very best.